Welcome to the lecture on factoring polynomials. So we're going to factor polynomials in a few different types of methods. We're going to first factor polynomials where the leading coefficient is 1, and also factor polynomials where the leading coefficient is greater than 1. So let's discuss the first case. The quadratic equation or an expression will be in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, this is a polynomial that we're used to in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. When we talk about the leading coefficient being equal to 1, we're talking about the coefficient right there in front of the x squared. That is a 1. All right, so a is equal to 1. So most of the time when we have a polynomial, we'll see, for instance, examples that look like this. x squared plus 4x plus 4. Right? When we don't see anything in front of this first term, the x squared term, it's implied to be a 1. Remember, it's implied to be an invisible 1 standing right there. So therefore, the leading coefficient the x squared term is a 1. So whenever we see this, then we'll attempt the method that we're about to use. However, if we were to see something in this form, 2x squared plus 6x minus 8, that leading coefficient is not a 1. If it's anything besides a 1, then we cannot use this method that I'm about to teach you. So let's begin. So we have x squared plus 6x plus 8. x squared plus 6x plus 8. We look at it and identify the leading coefficient. It in fact is a 1. There's nothing written in front of the x squared. There's not a 2, not a 3, not a 4, not a 5. So there's implied to be a 1 right there. So therefore we can use this method. Many textbooks call it other names, but I'll call it the product sum method. And in this method, you can only use this method when the leading coefficient is equal to 1. So what do we do here? We start out in the product sum method. We've already identified that this was a 1, so we can use this method. The next thing to do is to look at the constant term which is an 8. We say to ourselves, what times what will give us 8? What are two factors of 8? And then we look at the middle term, which is the 6. And we say, using those same two factors, if we add or subtract them, will we get a positive 6? So the first part is to think of what times what will get us this 8? And using those same two numbers, if we add or subtract them, will we get the middle term, 6? So first I would think to myself, what times what is 8? Ah, 8 times 1 is 8, right? 8 times 1 equals 8. However, if you add or subtract 8 and 1, will you get a positive 6? 8 plus 1 is 9. 8 minus 1 is 7. So you won't get a positive 6 if you add or subtract 8 and 1. So 8 and 1 will not work for us. They must satisfy both conditions. What are two other factors of 8? Let's see. 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8. And if we use 4 and 2, do we get 6 if we were to add or subtract them? If we subtract 4 and 2, we get 2. However, if we add 4 and 2, we will get 6. So this should work for us. But we first have to make sure our signs work. To get a positive 8, we must multiply positive times positive. And now we have to check and see if those signs work in the addition and subtraction. Positive 4, positive 2, it does get us a positive 6. So this is what we'll be using, positive 4 and positive 2. The next step is, to after, is after we get these numbers, we form two sets of parentheses. Put an x in each set. 
And then we just input what we just found. Positive four in one set of parentheses, a positive two in the other set. And now this is factored. We factored this polynomial. Okay, let's move on to our next example. The next example says to factor once again. Factor the polynomial x squared minus 12x plus 36. So remember, we said before we factor, we look at the leading coefficient in the x squared term. Here, the leading coefficient is a 1. We don't see anything in front of the x squared, so once again we know it's implied to be a 1. So if that's the case, then we can use our good old product sum method. The product sum method says we take this constant term and we look at that. We say to ourselves, what times what will get us a positive 36? And we look at the variable term. We look at negative 12 inside of that variable term. And we say, what add is subtracted to what will get us a negative 12? So remember, we have to use the same two numbers for both. So I say to myself, what times what is 36? Uh, it's, let's say 9 times 4. 9 times 4 is 36, right? However, do 9 and 4 get us 12, whether we add or subtract? When we add 9 and 4, we get 13. When we subtract 9 and 4, we get 5. We don't get 12. So 9 and 4 won't work for us. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I have to come up with two other numbers besides 9 and 4. What times what will get us 36? Let's say 6 and 6, right? 6 times 6 will get us 36. And now we have to try it in this second part here. 6 and 6, if we were to add them, it will get us 12. So now we have to place in the correct signs. Let's say a negative times a negative will get us a positive 36. And a negative 6 and a negative 6, when doing addition and subtraction, signs are alike. So we add, keep the same sign, and that will get us a negative 12. So that was the important part as well, making sure our signs were correct. If one was negative and one was positive, when we multiplied, we would have gotten a negative 36. And if one was positive and one was negative, when we did our addition and subtraction, we would have gotten a zero. So that was key. So we're using negative six and negative six. So remember the next step. We form two sets of parentheses. We place an x in both. And then we just plug in what we've just found negative 6 and a negative 6. And we've factored this polynomial. The polynomial factors into x negative 6 times x negative 6. Okay, let's start with another example. We'll use w squared negative w negative 20. W squared minus W minus 20. So first we look at the problem and we look at the leading coefficient. Once again, the leading coefficient is a 1. There's nothing here, so it's implied to be a 1. We know we can use our product sum method. Our product sum method says we use the constant term. We say to ourselves, what times what equals a negative 20? What added or subtracted to what? equals the coefficient in front of the variable term. Here's the variable term. We don't see a coefficient there, but we know before any variable, there's a 1 implied. And in this case, there's a negative 1. So we say to ourselves, what times what will get us negative 20? And what added or subtracted to what will get us a negative 1? So I'll go through my factors and say, ah, 5 and 4. 5 times 4 will get us 20, and 5, when we subtract 4 from it, will get us 1. So now it's a matter of putting in the correct symbols, signs. Sorry. If we plugged in a negative 5 and a positive 4, negative times positive 
is a negative. Negative 5 and positive 4. Signs are different, so we subtract, we get 1, and we take the sign of the larger magnitude number. So we take the negative. So the signs could not be interchanged. Note that we could not have a positive 5 and a negative 4. It would work for the multiplication, but it would not work for the addition subtraction. Because if this was a positive 5 and this was a negative 4, we would get a positive 1. But we need a negative 1, so the 5 had to be negative. So that's where we're going to use negative 5, positive 4. So we make our two sets of parentheses, and we plug in what we just found. Negative 5, positive 4. So we factor w squared minus w minus 20 into w minus 5 times w plus 4. 